Hi, this is Lorraine Watry, and this is a video of watercolor techniques for beginners. This is part one of four, and, and this is actually a repeat of my watercolor technique videos, but I have refilmed it and hopefully improved them so they're easier to see and follow along with. And as you can see, I have the grid drawn out on my paper, and everything is labeled clearly. And I have 21 different boxes, and I use a quarter sheet of watercolor paper. And a quarter sheet is a So I'm getting some watercolor uh, onto my palette right now, and I am mixing it with water enough that it will not be a thick wash. I want to be able to put the watercolor on and have it move. So I have my paper on a board, and I have that board tipped at an angle, because I want gravity to help me move the color down the page. So when you first put it on, it might look like it's a little bit not even, but basically you're trying to get an even wash of color across there. And that is a great technique to use for a sky or something where you just want to have it look like it's all the same color. The next one is a graded wash. And I am going to get out some color, and then I will show you how to do that one. And you really want to have your board tipped for this technique, because it will help keep the water moving down and help keep that color um, moving from dark to light. So I put on a swatch of color, and then I go over to my clear water, and I dip my brush and clean it, and without taking the color out of it, I'm just thinning the color that's in the brush. So I go and get some more water on my brush and I'll dip my brush a couple more times. Now you may decide that you need to dab your brush on a paper towel as well just so that it takes a little bit of that water out of it. It also depends on how wet your first wash of color was. The next one is glazing and this reminded me that I needed to do a couple different techniques the first pass on them so that when I come back later these things will be dry. So basically I just took a quick pass of yellow paint over that area and that was Oriel and yellow. And now I'm going to move down and put some paint on the lift or feather out area. And the next one I'm going to do is masking fluid and tape. And what I'm showing you right there is a Windsor and Newton mask. And basically a mask is a way to protect your paper while you're painting so that later on you can come back and remove the mask and then either leave it white or paint it a color. So I get out a, uh, I actually use a clay shaper tool and it has a rubber tip to the end of it. And that is a, a great tool to put mask on with because you can just peel the masking back off of it and you can get all different sizes of clay shaper tools. So the mask is on and it has to dry before we can do anything. And then the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use some extra adhesive masking tape. And you can find that at your hardware store. And the first thing I'm going to do is draw a random sort of tree shape. And then you can see when I put the masking over, the masking tape over it, that you can still see through and see your line. And you don't actually have to draw very dark. And then you just want to make sure you seal it down well. And the reason you want extra adhesive is because you want to make sure that the watercolor that you put around it doesn't seep under it. And then I use a blade that you can break off the tip of it and push the, the next sharp tip forward. And you can find those at hardware stores. But you can also use an X-Acto blade. And you want to cut through the tape, but you don't want to cut through your watercolor paper. And so you want to maybe try this technique on a spare piece of paper and make sure you understand how heavy you need to push. You do need to give it some pressure, but you don't want to go through your paper. So you can kind of see there I didn't get it completely on that one edge. So I was able to tear it off anyway, though. Okay, so I have my tree shape, and I'm going to leave that to dry the masking to dry. The tape is already dry. Okay, and we're going to go back up to negative painting. And negative painting is a way that you can paint around 
something else to make another shape and also to refine the shape that you may have put on at first. So I'm just putting on a light color so that I can then paint dark, a darker color around it later. So you just want to use something in a lighter shade in that area. Okay, and then the last one that we need to put some color on before we move on is on the magic eraser section. And I will explain that in a little bit. And the magic eraser section just needs to be a big swatch of color and you can use whatever. I think I use pyrrole orange there. It's one of my new favorite colors. So now we're moving back up and we'll let those other techniques dry. One way I'm showing you right there, you can tell if your watercolor is dry is by touching the paint with the back of your hand. You don't want to use the front because it could transfer oils. And if the paper is still feeling cool to the touch, then that means it's not dry, even if it looks like it might be. So when your paper is completely dry, you won't feel that, that change of temperature. So wet on wet is the next technique. And I just wet the paper with clear water. And there's two things you can do with wet on wet. You can just drop color on randomly and let it kind of bleed and move and it'll have soft edges. Let it just do its own thing and it's a lot of fun to watch. And this is great for backgrounds and softer focus things. And then on the other side I am going to just take uh, paint and this is great for areas where you have a uh, larger section that you're trying to paint and keep it wet while you're moving so that you don't end up with hard edges. And it's great for skies and things like that. And then one thing to realize is that whenever you put water on your paper first and then put paint on top of that, it will actually lighten your paint because you're actually adding more water to that mix. And then in general, watercolors dry lighter than what you paint on your paper initially. So um, that's just something to be aware of. If you want a darker wash, you may need to add more color to that area. Dropping color on wet color. And so I just put some color on my paper. I believe that's cobalt blue. And I'm going to get quinacrinone magenta. And I'm just spattering on the color there. And then I actually touch my brush to the color on the other side. And basically what I am doing is allowing the color to mix on the paper. So you will get really beautiful mixes where the paint will blend more in one area and less in another. You might see more of the blue or more of the magenta color. And it's just very loose and, and free flowing. Now I'm taking my brush and I'm making what's called a thirsty brush. So, so my brush was wet and then I dabbed it on my paper towel. So it's still got some moisture in it, but it's mostly dry. And then I want to, for the dry brush, I'm just mostly going kind of over the surface and have my brush a little bit at an angle. Dry brush is great for doing texture on, like hair on an animal, or if you want an area in your water that has some um, skipped places where it's kind of sparkly, that's a great use of dry brush. So these videos will continue and I hope to see you again in part two of watercolor techniques for beginners. Thanks. Bye.